Today I'm gonna to show you guys how to make a perfectly decorated cake, smooth frosting, nice corners, basic piping, and ganache drips. Now before we get into decorating, I just wanna tell you guys the things I could not live without as a cake baker and decorator. I make a lot of cakes every month and these are the things I need in order to get a nice good cake. So first and foremost, a cake board. You need something to put the cake on. So cake board, I always do two inches larger than the size of the cake itself. So eight inch cake, I have 10 inch cake boards. Second, and probably the most important thing is a turntable. Now this is how we are going to get nice, smooth, even frosting. It does most of the work for you and if you don't have one it will completely change your life and then hand tools we have spatulas here I have two offset spatulas one small one large and then a flat one these are my again things that I cannot live without these are the bare minimum that I need for a nice smooth cake now when it comes to securing the board on the turntable you don't want to just put it on there because it'll slide around if you try and decorate you need to secure it on there and a lot of people will put a damp paper towel underneath because it grips i honestly just tape it to the turntable just because i have in the past noticed that sometimes the paper towel can make the cake board a little wet and it doesn't look great so i just tape it down one piece per side of the cake board and then it's secure and it's not going anywhere. First thing I do is I always kind of look at the cakes and see if they're uneven in any parts because most of the time I just compensate with more frosting if there's a side that's a bit lower. But if there's like something seriously wrong, you need to catch it early so that you can trim the cake and make sure they're nice and flat. These actually look pretty good. I can work with this. I'm just gonna take my first layer. These have to be completely cooled. You cannot frost cakes that are warm at all. The frosting will melt. And I always put the flat side down because it helps grip the cake to the board. Make sure it's centered. And I'll do a quick little peek like this to make sure it's mostly flat so that I'll know if I need to put more frosting on one side of the cake to kind of level it out. And I'll do usually about a half a cup of frosting in between the layers. And I just kind of put my finger here. This is where I apply the pressure. I don't push, I apply pressure with my finger. And I do these swooping motions just to spread it out on the cake layer. This is all a matter of feeling. And when we're doing the outer layer to get smooth frosting, it's gonna be all in how it feels and you're gonna to have to practice to know how it feels to make sure you're putting the right pressure on the frosting. And then this is where I'll get down on eye level again and I'll make sure it's flat. If it's not, it's not right there. I will put a little more frosting where it's lower and I'll just kind of, I'll keep it taller there but I'll like smooth it out, bring it into the center so that when we put the next layer on, it'll be nice and flat. This layer actually looks pretty even, but I think this side maybe is a little bit thinner. So I'm gonna put it on this side here and we're nice and flat, looking good. And same deal, half a cup of frosting. And when finishing off a cake with the third layer, I always put the flat side up because I like to get the nice square edges on the cake and this is the best way to do it. When it comes to crumb coating a cake, which is a thin outer layer of frosting that we're gonna chill before we do the final layer, you don't wanna use a ton of frosting. You wanna conserve most of it for the end. I'll take some frosting, I'll kind of push it on the sides of the cake and then you literally just spread it out into a thin layer. This is to catch any loose crumbs that are on the cake layers so that when we do the final layer of frosting, it's nice and smooth and there are no imperfections in it. So this is when you can kind of put a little more pressure onto it because you're pretty much pushing the frosting onto the cake. And this is where we're gonna fill in any gaps between the layers. And when it comes to smoothing this out, I'm at a very, very slight angle. It's not flat flush against the cake, it's very slight. And I just kind of let the turntable do the work Keep the spatula almost stationary, but kind of move in the opposite direction. And you just repeat this process until the entire side of the cake is coated in that nice thin layer of frosting. 
And then when the whole side of the cake is coated, again, very slight angle, not flush, but not like 90 degrees, just rotate and smooth out. You will be removing some excess. You wanna do this a couple times, and a very important thing to do is scrape the excess frosting off your spatula between every motion you do. That way it stays nice and smooth and you don't have a big buildup of frosting on the sides. And then when it comes to the top of the cake, this is when I go in with the smaller spatula and just a small amount. I'm pretty much just gonna spread this all over the top of the cake just to coat it. And then I'm gonna make sure I scrape this off, keep it nice and clean. I'm gonna go back in with our flat one and I'm gonna do the sides one more time. to clean up the frosting that we pushed over the edges. The crumb coat is a pretty crucial part of the process if you are trying to get better at cakes that are very smooth, straight, and have the nice corners. Because after we coat this with this thin layer of frosting, we need to chill it. I usually freeze mine because I just like to work quicker. Um, if you have room in your freezer, I literally just take this whole thing Put it in the freezer because I'm doing one cake at a time. I don't need this turntable for anything else. And I'll freeze it for about 10 minutes or until you can touch the frosting and it doesn't stick to your finger. If you need to put it in the fridge because you don't have freezer space, just chill it 30 minutes or until again you can touch it and the frosting doesn't stick to your finger. All right, about 10 minutes later, I actually went ahead and put a thin layer of frosting on top again just because there was a slight lean and I wanted to even it out. So now it's nice and straight and we're gonna go in with our final layer of frosting. So the first thing I make sure I do throughout this process is every time I add and smooth out frosting, I scrape off the spatula, clean it off. It just helps keep things nice and neat. We're gonna apply frosting first. So I'm gonna take nice dollops of frosting and kind of just place them on the cake. I'm not gonna spread them out much. And I'm always returning to this grip. I have my grip here and then my index finger here where I'm applying pressure. And this is kind of my returning position when I'm frosting a cake because I have total control over the whole thing. So I always make sure that my spatula is straight against the cake. It's, you don't wanna go like this because there's no way to make it smooth. I do this, that way we can work with the turntable and everything will stay nice and neat. This is our returning position. So we're gonna keep adding our frosting here. Again, I'm not smoothing it out yet. I'm really just applying it to the cake. When you have covered the cake in frosting, again, clean that off. And this is what I'm gonna go in with our larger offset spatula, just because it's taller and it has the entire length of the cake on it. Something you see a lot of people do is use cake scrapers. I have one, I use it sometimes. It's great for really tall cakes because a spatula is only so long and can only control so much. But I do a lot of cakes this size and I have gotten so used to using a spatula. It's just my preferred method. If you want to use a cake scraper, you absolutely can. They are fantastic, very easy to use and very widely available now. So same grip, although this time I'm putting my finger actually on the, the angle of the spatula itself. Same position, we're over the cake and I wanna make sure the bottom of the spatula is just barely touching the cake board and that we're at that slight angle, not 90, not flush, slight angle. And you can do this slowly. Make sure the spatula is straight against the cake, no angle, and we're just gonna start smoothing it out. You don't wanna press. You just wanna kind of glaze it over the frosting. And I do this a little bit at a time because a lot of frosting builds up and it's hard to smooth out if you have a lot of frosting on there. So this is a little bit of a timely process. It's repetitive, but that's how you get a smooth, clean cake. Every time you take that spatula off the cake, clean it off and then pick up where you left off. Same deal, very, very light pressure. Keep it straight, slowly rotate, scrape and remove. And once again, you don't wanna push on the cake because you'll take all the frosting off. You just really wanna smooth it out. You can go in and look and see if there are any like dents or really large bubbles. And that's where you can dab on a little more buttercream and then smooth it out again. But this is actually looking pretty good. So we're gonna go in with the top. So I'm gonna go in with my smaller offset spatula and 
place a nice amount of frosting on the top and I'm gonna spread it all the way to the sides. We're not done with the sides, so don't worry about pushing this frosting over. You actually want to because you wanna make sure the corners are nice and clean and there's no pockets where there isn't frosting. So kind of, and I'm same grip, just gently pushing the frosting out to the sides and slightly over. And you'll see why in a minute. Make sure your spatula is nice and clean going in with the larger offset. We're gonna do one more smooth out. Same deal, same grip, same very light pressure, tiny angle, and just slowly going, making sure that the spatula is in full contact from the top all the way to the bottom. This looks great, but to make sure it is super smooth, I'm gonna show you this trick. Instead of chilling it and doing that, you can use the hot water method. And a way to get a super smooth finish on a cake without the scraper is dip your offset spatula, the longer one, into the hot water, just kind of flick off the excess using the inside edge going over. We're just going to gently smooth this out. I'm not really applying any pressure at all. I'm just kind of spreading the frosting. This is extremely light pressure. You don't want to press at all. You want to use the pressure with your index finger, make sure it's all the way flush against the cake, slight angle like that, and then do little bits at a time. Make sure there's not too much water on there either. And just kind of pick up where you left off and smooth it out. So now we're just going to get the top done. Since we built up this frosting over the top, all we have to do is bring it in. And pretty much at a 45 degree angle, I'm going to just bring this in like that. Kind of like spread it that way, bring it into the cake. It's gonna remove some excess. Take it off the spatula, clean it off, pick up where you left off, corner it, and get into that process of bring in, smooth, scrape, bring in, and keep doing that. And that, my friends, is how you get a nice square edge on your cake. Now, if you wanna skip the chocolate ganache, you absolutely can, and you can go in with piping, but we're gonna do a ganache drip. So this needs to be chilled again, freeze for about 10 minutes until it's cold to the touch, or refrigerate for about 20 to 30. So we're gonna make a ganache to do a cool drip effect, and it's super easy. I have four ounces of good semi-sweet chocolate that I've chopped in a bowl, chop it pretty finely, and then I have two thirds of a cup of heavy cream that I heated in the microwave until it just started to come to a simmer. All you gotta do for easy ganache is pour the hot cream over the chocolate and just let it sit for about a minute. And that's how you melt the chocolate, but don't overheat it. So you have a nice smooth ganache. And after it's been about a minute, you just take a small spatula or spoon, start in the middle, just make small motions, little circular swirls like this until you see it start to come together. Then you can stir a little more vigorously, widen your circles and just work your way towards the outer edge of the bowl. I'm gonna transport it to a liquid measuring cup. And then, so we can do the drips pretty easily. I have these plastic squeeze bottles. They're super cheap. I highly, highly recommend them. And we're just gonna pour the ganache into the container. And then look at how easy this is. You just put the squeeze bottle almost at the edge of the cake, gently squeeze, and just apply different pressure as you go. But this is why the cake needs to be chilled so that those ganache drips will stop and set at various lengths and not just drip all the way to the bottom. And then I'm simply just gonna squeeze a lot of this ganache on top of the cake. Take our small offset spatula and just gently, but somewhat quickly spread it so that it meets up with the edges. All right, we're in the home stretch. So my frosting that I had left over, I put in a piping bag. I love disposable ones because I hate cleaning piping bags. And I have a large star tip. It's a Wilton 1M tip, probably my go-to decorating tip. I love to do reverse shell patterns because I think they look super elegant. So I'm basically just going to, I keep my grip here with these two fingers and then put the rest here. And these are where I apply pressure. And I kind of go in at a slight angle, not vertical, not horizontal. Slight angle, 
and this is just about applying even pressure. So a reverse shell is when you do a loop, go up, and do a loop upside down. It's just one loop and then an upside down one. And again, it's just a matter of applying the right kind of pressure, not too much, but making sure it's even so that this border is the same thickness all the way around. And then just a nice finishing touch because I think cakes should always have some sort of garnish on top, whether it be sprinkles or something else. I'm just gonna put some chocolate shavings around this top edge of frosting here. And look at that. It's a little bit of a process, but you guys see that it's really not that hard. It just takes practice and you can make gorgeous cakes like this. I never get to do this because I'm always making cakes for clients. I never get to actually cut into one and enjoy it for myself. Oh my God. I certainly hope you guys picked up some tidbits and little tricks that can help you decorate really nice cakes. Be sure to check out my next videos and my shorts, as well as all my other social media linked below. Thanks so much for joining me and I'll see you next time.